What's up, all my Power Rise crew? Today on Tool Time Tuesday, let me give you some clues. Hood's open, so you know we're going to demonstrate under the hood. We have a starter solenoid. Yes, you're right. That's not a Jeep. It's a Ford. But we have a Jeep starter. Another Ford solenoid. What's this got to do with anything? A Ford starter. What's this got to do with Tool Time Tuesday? Yes, it takes tools to work on those. Did uh, you guys know what that is? It's kind of funny whenever you start going through all your tools, straightening the crap up, what you find. Obviously, I've had this thing for a long time. I've never used it. Hmm. Because I've always used the screwdriver trick to turn my engines over. Is that a clue? That's right. We're gonna, this is a little remote start button. Basically, what happens is you clamp one end to your battery or post on your starter. And I can show you that guy, show you that here in a bit. You take the other end, clamp it onto your starter post that triggers the solenoid that spins your engine over. Then you push that button. Very handy tool, trust me. This is one of those little tools that you should have in your box if you do any kind of engine work. You will eventually need one of these, guarantee it. Okay. So if it's the first time you guys are laying on Power Axe YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button down below because I do Jeep videos, car videos, motorcycle videos, tool videos, review videos, and do all kinds of cool stuff that you just might learn some. Hit that like button down below, subscribe if you haven't, let's get on with this video. Just to explain how the circuit works, let's start out on the Ford here since I've got it all laid out here in my driveway. Okay, some of you are freaking out on me. Oh my gosh, it's a Ford circuit, it's a Ford starter, it's not a Jeep, I don't know what to do. Stop it. Listen. Don't get hung up on the fact that I'm showing you on a Ford and I've got a Jeep behind me. I'll show you on the Jeep, but here's the principle behind the videos that I release. Yes, I show you guys a lot of videos on this primarily Jeep, and most of my channel, probably 98% of it, is about Jeeps. But I've got a Bronco, I've got a Mustang, and I've got two motorcycles, and I've got access to several other different types of cars that you never know what my videos are going to be about. But the principle behind any type of mechanical electrical is the fact that the principle of how electricity in these circuits work is still primarily the same. You've got a starter solenoid on this fork right here that sends the big voltage to the starter that spins it over. I said big voltage, actually I should have said the high amperage, okay? The solenoid, you turn the key, it sends power to that solenoid, which then sends the solenoid, allows the current to go to the starter, spins it over. Jeeps, they don't use a solenoid, but they use a starter relay. You turn the key, it activates that relay. The relay closes the circuit, sends the high amperage stuff down to the starter. Starter turns over, turns your engine. One uses a relay, one uses a solenoid. See, the principle is still the same. So don't get hung up on just because I'm showing you on a Ford circuit. Open your mind and look, take it as a learning experience no matter what kind of vehicle you're working on, okay? Don't get narrow-minded on just type of one vehicle, because then you can open up your possibilities to so many different other things you can learn to work on. Cool? All right, let's get back on this. Now, as I just mentioned, this is your starter solenoid. This wire right here, as you see, is going to go on your positive side of your battery. This will be your ground. When you bolt this to the side of your firewall, your fender, wherever the case may be, this will become your ground. And what happens, if you look real close, you've got an S and an I. Some Ford uh, solenoids do not have that eye, so it does or not, does not, whatever, irrelevant, because this is the post we're worried about here, the S. This is the starting circuit, which means when I turn my ignition key, it activates this solenoid post. And if you guys refer back to my relay videos, this is very similar. When the current hits that S post, it closes the coil inside here, which allows uh, voltage to pass from here to here, going all the way around, spinning the starter over, because the starter bolts to the block, which has this ground there. So this allows current from the positive side of the battery to flow through to this. This is your ground completing the circuit. Starter spins over, okay? Now we'll get to the Jeep circuit here in just a moment. So let me explain how this the starter button is going to work. Okay, as you can see here, I've got the black post here on the S, which is the starting circuit on the solenoid. The red is on the cable that goes to your positive battery post. Now what you can do is you can hook it directly to the battery, the battery post if you want, totally up to you, because you've got more than enough wire to do that with. So what would normally happen when you turn the ignition key, it will send voltage to this S post right here, activate the solenoid, send voltage to the starter, like I mentioned, like I said a moment ago. But what if you need to turn the engine over? Your arms ain't long enough 
to look under the hood and turn the ignition over inside, inside. unless you got a buddy in there and say, hey dude, hit the bu uh, bump the motor over, start the motor, whatever the case may be. You don't have to have that. What you do now is push this. You can start the vehicle from the outside, providing your clamp stays on, that is. Cool? All right, so this is what a forward circuit would look like on the S and on the battery post here, or you clamp it onto here for the solenoid. Let me grab another solenoid and show you something. Here's another style forward solenoid. Again, you got the I, you've got the S, I is for ignition, S for the switch circuit. This side could be your uh, going to the battery, this side goes to your starter. All right, so now let's look at what we can do with the Jeep. Okay, this is the back end of a Jeep starter. It come off of a 4.0. What'll happen is your battery cable will come down here, bolt onto the back of this from your positive side of your battery. And remember the forward solenoid, where I said, one side goes to the battery, one side goes to the starter. Look what we got here. One side comes from the battery, this side goes to the starter because this bolts directly onto the starter. Now, the difference between Fords and the Chrysler's is that I really should be getting into this with the video, but hey, what the heck. This has a little mechanism right here that kicks out the Bendix here that starts, that you no, know, makes it start up and all that kind of fun jazz. Now, I'll try to find it and I'll, I'll try to find the video and put a link down below in the description where you guys can see where I was testing the starter and the Bendix was kicking out, okay? So, what, we was gonna, what we're gonna do, where did my starter button go? I lost it. There it is. Okay, we found it. Okay, again, now there's a little tab that I broke off this, which means the starter really isn't no good, or at least the solenoid isn't. So what we'll do is, we'll actually do it on my Jeep, do a starting demonstration and stuff here in a moment. But this will go here if it'll hold on anyway that'll go there and this will go up to your starter up on your battery you know what? let's just quit playing with this junk and actually do the gig now if you unwrap all your wires you take your red lead hook it onto your battery your black lead and you go under your Jeep right there look at the under my Jeep here's the starter this is going up to the uh, positive side of your battery this is going to your starter relay coming off of your uh, power distribution center up there where your fuses and relays are take your black lead hook it onto that right there and now we have it hooked up but now out from underneath the Jeep we go now before we start the demonstration safety you know, got the tires chocked here and here so it does not roll why because my jeep is a five speed i've got to take it out of gear take the mr shafter and take it out of gear ha 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 don't want to roll off or run over anything and notice for the moment i got the ignition is turned off you do not want the, I, at this point, I just want to turn the engine over and not start it. So the ignition is turned off, keys in my pocket. Now, if you have an automatic, you know, be sure to put your emergency brake on. I would do my emergency brake, but it's a typical YJ thing that I don't have an emergency brake. It don't work. So, wheels are chocked, so it doesn't take off for rolling down the driveway because I've got kicked out of gear. Time to push the button. This is normally, if you don't have one of these little contraptions, this is normally where you need a buddy inside the Jeep saying, hey man, turn it over. Well, guess what? I'm out here by myself. But I don't need anybody to turn it over because watch this. Look at that. Ain't that sweet? Just push a button. It works so well. Trust me. This is one of those tools if you do much engine work at all, this will save you a lot of headache. Again, red's hooked here. And the black is hooked way down yonder. Right there on the starter. Because right there goes up to your positive battery post. You can see right there it goes over into the starter. Right there is your starting circuit that goes up to your starter relay inside your box up here. And all you got is hook that clip onto that. 
Hook it under that. Come over here. Push the button. Looky right there, people. Does that look like a Wrangler alternator? No, it does not. That's a Dodge Durango 130 amp monster. I've got a video on that, by the way. Now, some of you diehard Jeep fans are going to be saying, seriously, Chuck, you're going to use that contraption to turn a Jeep engine over when all you got to do is pull the relay out and jump this post to that post, and you can do the same thing? Yes, I did use that contraption, and yes, you are correct. If you pull the starter relay out, there is a post to post that you jump that will start the, that will turn the engine over. But you know what? That's a topic for another video, because not only will I show you how to do that, but there's other tricks, too. So that's a topic for another video. So if you're calling me out on that, I beat you to it. I guess y'all want to see me start it make it run too, huh? All right, I'll do that. Keys in the ignition. Turn the ignition on because I got my dash lights. And like I said, make sure you are out of gear. You do not want to run over things in front of you if it starts. Ha 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 ha. You know what? I just have fun doing that. Okay. All right, let's start this thing. And again, I've got my clamp here on the battery post. And my other black clamp is way down yonder on the starter. I got my activator button here. No! No, just joking. So, y'all ready to start this thing? Yes, let's push the button. Now, here's the caveat to this. I can push the button to start it, but I still got to run back in there and turn the ignition off. See, there's still a little catch 22 to that. So, let's start this thing up. Don't hit it again. If you start it, don't do that again. That'd be a bad thing because that'll throw your starter straight into the uh, flywheel and you'll hear very bad sound. So let's go turn this thing off. And off we go. Sweet. So, all you Chevrolet fans, what do you do? Boop. You take the black lead, put it right here. Take the red lead, put it here. Or you put the red lead on the positive battery post. See? Pretty simple. Now you would think after having a lengthy GMC truck and, a, and an old three-quarter ton Chevy, I'd have some uh, Chevrolet parts left around here. But I don't. I don't think I've got right now. I've got a 350 on the interstate and a four-bolt block 350 that's going to go in a rust bucket eventually. And with a TPI fuel injection set up, I'll, I'm giving you guys clues what's coming up with the rust bucket. Wow! Yeah, you want to subscribe. So anyway... That's what you do with the Chevrolet if you have a GM starter. Well, everyone, did you learn a little something about tool time? Did you learn a little something from tool time? Oh. Just for the record, I feel like crap. I've got a seriously bad cold. It's cold out here. And, yeah, I'm just not... Take 110. So did you learn a little something, something from Tool Time Tuesday today? If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, leave some cool comments down below. Leave me some ideas down in the comments of other cool tools you guys would like to check out. I've got access to everything I've got here. I've got access to my friend shop. I can go to a loaner tool, pick up a tool there, and say, hey, this is how you use this. Cool. All right. So everyone, if you enjoyed the video, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, leave some cool comments down below, and I really appreciate you hanging out with me. Oh yeah, by the way, share these videos out to you know your Facebook, your Twitter, uh, no no, Reddit, whatever your favorite social media is. Because when you share these videos, what's well, like this? I make these videos. I put them up on YouTube. You guys get your education from them. But what you can do to help other people is very simple for you. All you got to do is share these videos to your favorite social media. Say hey. Check out what he's done now. It's very educational. It may help someone out, you know? So you share, guys share these videos out. It helps people. Come on. Let's work together as one big community. Cool? All right, everyone. Appreciate you hanging out with me. Peace out. Later, y'all.